Hello and welcome to another Petrol Data support video. Today we're going to talk, talk about triggers and markers in Solo Storm. Uh, I know they can cause uh, a bit of confusion as to what they do exactly and uh, how to set them. Okay, so first off, we're going to talk about triggers versus markers. There are start stop triggers within Solo Storm, and there are start stop markers as well as a staging marker. Now, triggers uh, are much like kind of the name describes. They trigger an action. Now, that may be an easier way to think about it. So in SolarStorm's case, a start trigger will cause SolarStorm to start logging data. And conversely, uh, the stop trigger will stop logging uh, telemetry uh, when the stop trigger action is uh, or criteria are met okay now one thing to consider is that triggers will only be active if your logger is actually active that might seem obvious but uh, for first timers that might uh, might not be so obvious necessarily okay now markers are kind of a helper um, the markers the start and stop markers help you set a, a GPS location that allows SolarStorm to calculate a runtime. So specifically for autocross um, and pro solo and hill climb. So where the start and stop is not defined by a specific track in a single location, you would have a, um, an AB race, if you will. You start at position A and you stop at position B. Um, setting those markers just gives you a rough idea um, of your run um, time that SolarStorm can calculate for you. Now, that calculate time is likely going to differ from your official club timing, and that's because um, the GPS, you know, has a little bit of drift, isn't, um, you know, precise to, you know, the inch or centimeter. Um, so it just gives you a rough idea. You can try and figure out um, exactly uh, uh, what your runtime was. Okay, and then we mentioned there's that staging marker. Um, staging marker is a little bit of a mix of the two. Um, you obviously have a stage line um, for autocross, uh, and that's where you would line up, um, where the timing lights are probably a good few feet away. And what the staging marker does is it does trigger one action, and that action, if you if you set it in the settings, is to start your video recording, right? So you can the video is recording before you launch, as opposed to almost right as you launch. Okay. So we'll run through um, some of those settings here. Um, we'll go through into into settings here, and then the main menu is settings. Okay. And we'll start with the, that stage setting, just so um, kind of as we're running up. So within the video uh, menu, you'll see start recording when staged, and that's currently turned on. So that will um, set your camera recording once you pull up to that line. Okay. Now, um, you do need to set that stage marker. Now, if you don't set that stage marker, what will happen is that once with the logger on, you pull up to your stage marker, you'll notice that the button, um, there will be a button within the logger that says start video. The first time you hit that start video, it'll automatically set wherever you are, or wherever that GPS location is as your stage marker. So you don't necessarily have to set the stage marker um, while you're doing course walks or pre-event. Um, you may want to, that's your choice. Um, if you're walking around setting start and stop markers as it is, you might as well set that stage marker. But if you've forgotten to, no worries. That first time you hit start video for your first run, it will set that location as your stage marker and, and video will start there uh, after each subsequent run. Okay, then we'll go into the triggers here. So trigger mode automatic is what you want um, if you want the ease of just pulling up and just going going for it okay and if you set manual then what you're going to have to do is each time you pull up to stage is you're going to have to manually turn the logger on to record 
okay um, that's kind of up to you if you're finding maybe you're having some some issues getting the trigger set just right uh, maybe try and set it at, at manual just so that you don't run into lost lost runs okay so we're gonna have it as uh, automatic and armed while staged uh, what this does is it prevents you from reaching or triggering the logging um, from your drive from say your pit or the grid to the staging or start line okay uh, depending on your facility larger facilities you might be driving fast enough depending on what your trigger was uh, set at um, that it will start recording and you'll all of a sudden have these strange uh, straight line or short little logs um, that you have to clean up so this this option here is just to help you do that is, is so that if you're not staged hey I'm not gonna go for a run don't record the data okay now if you find you've you're missing logs for some reason, well, let's let's try turning that off um, so that maybe it's getting confused, maybe some GPS drift um, has come into play so Soulstorm doesn't think you're at the stage line when you actually are, All right? Okay, so triggers, trigger speed and trigger time. These are your criteria that are, in this case, going to be for your start trigger. Um, what's going to tell Soulstorm, hey, you know what, I'm headed out for a run. Okay, so we typically wouldn't suggest too slow speed because you, you're probably going to trip it um, driving around the grid. But if if you have the um, um, the armed while stage option uh, turned on, that that's less of a concern. I'm I'm a little bit conservative. I like to be somewhere in the middle here, not too slow, not too fast. That uh, I have to um, depending on the course. Who knows? I may not hit uh, a really high speed right off the start. And I might lose some, I might lose some logs. So, 10, 15 miles per hour is kind of like where where I like it. Okay, um, and then the next part would be, well, how long is that speed going to be sustained to really indicate, hey, I am going out for for a run. And again, this may be course or facility dependent. Um, if you have a smaller facility and you typically don't hit. Um, a high speed necessarily right away for a sustained duration then you might want to set this a little bit shorter and of course the downside to setting a shorter time would be yes um, you might have some false triggers dropping around grid so sometimes you're going to have to play with this a little bit but for me um, for my facilities kind of this 10 15 mile per hour two or three seconds is is usually sufficient and the stop trigger is just completely um, the opposite, right? Uh, what conditions do I want to meet in order for the uh, solar storm to stop logging? Now, something you do need to watch out for is, well, if you spin on course. Well, um, at this point, it's going to th think you want to uh, stop probably, right? Because you're going to have a lower speed for a certain amount of time before you get going again. And then what you're probably going to have is two logs uh, created one when you spun and stops and then basically you finish the rest of your run um, it's going to log it as another run okay so you can clean those up and um, we can talk about that in another video um, how to clean up some of those logs okay and uh, this final option here that's grayed out the stop at finish marker um, what it does is we just read through here, stop at the finish marker or when the speed and time have been met, uh, basically the stop trigger uh, conditions. So uh, to enable this, this uh, your armed while staged for the start trigger must be enabled. Um, and you see here now that it's, uh, it's enabled for us to select. Uh, basically, it stops the logging, stops your video um, at your finish marker as opposed to waiting for the trigger speed and time. Um, or vice versa, but uh, there's a lot of facilities I know, some of the courses I've run, uh, the stop line, uh, we may not uh, get that that slow after the, the stop lights, um, and therefore you just kind of keep rolling, you may not be speeding, nobody speeds through the grid, but um, your speed might just not be low enough to trigger a stop 
in SolarStorm, so your video kind of keeps recording, the data logger keeps logging, and what you end up with is this long little trail back to your, your grid spot or to your pit spot. And uh, just requires that little bit more editing, right, for, for your video and, uh, and then that tail uh, that you see on, in, in your um, data logged. So if we enable this, that just helps to um, just cut the logs a little bit shorter, cut your video a little bit shorter, save a little bit of memory um, and whatnot. Okay, now that we've covered the triggers, and we'll talk about the markers. So the markers um, you'll want to set on your during your course walks, because um, obviously you can't really set it with a, with a live event. That kind of goes without saying. Um, what you'll need to do is have your device, your tablet or your phone with you, um, ideally with your GPS puck as well. Um, to because you will need the GPS location. For this example, I'm just using my onboard um, GPS. So you can see internal GPS and it's only at one hertz um, because that's for the most part, that's most devices, tablets and phones only re, um, record, report GPS at one hertz. And which is why we do recommend um, using GPS pucks for, um, for your driving, you know, particularly when it comes to um, autocross where you have a lot of action in kind of a short compact um, period. Okay, so um, you will need to turn your logger on. In this case, I'm already on. Um, and the event is already configured. And what we'll do is we'll walk up to the start line and we'll tap this button here. Actually, let me go back. So it's the little GPS um, button that's a location kind of pin next to the event name, marker test autocross. So we're going to tap that and I'm going to walk essentially to each location. So I'm going to walk up to my stage line uh, if I want to set my stage marker and I'm going to hit set staging marker, right? Now, you, if you found that you, you don't like it, you can clear that, okay? Um, now we're going to walk up to the start marker. The start marker is where your timing lights are. Okay, not necessarily the start of the course. Um, you want to make sure we, this, if, if it's going to help you determine your run time as accurately as possible, you want to be, you got to look around where those start lights going to be and set this there. Okay, and then um, same thing. You're going to walk to the finish, again, to the finish lights. Um, you're going to stop for a second and then hit finish marker. Now, it does, I haven't moved, so it can, it's, it knows that I'm a little bit too close to my start marker and it's going to cause all kinds of weird data problems, um, understandably so. Um, if you wanted to add sector markers, you certainly could, um, but SolarStorm does automatically throw suggested sectors into a log once, uh, once a run has been recorded and you can also manage those sectors um, within the analysis function as well. So I'm just going to clear the start marker just as an example there and you can see that I'm clearing the stage marker. Well, let me leave that marker in there and I'll leave that. Okay, so now actually, once you've done that, um, we'll, a function we have within SolarStorm is that you can share those markers with, um, with other drivers at the event and just making for some consistency when you're comparing your logs in, in Petrol Cloud. So what we'll do is go into the main menu, go into configure event, and at the bottom of this current event is broadcast to other devices or in the case of someone receiving, receive from other devices. And what this does is this will use Bluetooth um, to transmit those marker, that marker information to anyone who wishes to receive it. You know, you gotta be obviously kind of in a conversation space um, with these users. It's not just gonna sit there and just kind of broadcast it actively. You do have to um, actively tap receive from other device in order to receive it. So um, if you're walking around in a group, you just go ahead and say, hey, let's, let's share the marker information, broadcast to other devices, everyone else hits receive from other device and it'll let them uh, select the device that they should be receiving data from. So hopefully that, um, that explains the markers and triggers within SolarStorm. Uh, hope you found that video helpful. If uh, you need any, have any questions about the functionality of this, uh, these uh, features, please send us an email, support at petroldata.com.
Thanks, and we'll see you next time.